Hey guys, and welcome to Code with Chuck. Today we're going to make this cool little jetpack. Uh, I've included the asset files for it for free in the description. If you want to download those, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so first we got our third person template here. We're gonna go and make a new folder called Jetpack to keep all of our Jetpack assets in. We'll go ahead and we'll open up the folder and drag in the static mesh asset that was downloaded from the description. Once you got that, we're gonna right click. We're gonna create a new blueprint class and select the actor. Let's name this Jetpack underscore BP. Once we got that, let's open it up. Let's go into the content drawer and drag in our static mesh. Once we have that, we should add two cascade particle effects, and we're gonna use these to create a emitter at the location of the jetpack nozzles to kind of make it look like it's blasting off. We're gonna reposition these so that there's one at each nozzle. Now, since we are dealing with a small mesh, we may have to decrease the increment snap size. And in this case, I brought it all the way down to one just so I could get those nozzles relatively well aligned. We're gonna go ahead and use the tutorial particle system, which is included with Unreal Engine. And then we need to scale it down some in order to make it seem more realistic for the size of our jetpack. Now that we got that, we also need to rotate these so that they're upside down and the particles flow downward from the jetpack. Okay, so now we're gonna go in the blue folder and then the third person player character. This is where a lot of the action is gonna happen with the jetpack. We're gonna drag in our jetpack underscore BP actor and we're gonna make sure that we place it below the mesh actor in the hierarchy. Then with the jetpack selected, we're gonna change the parent socket and we're gonna use one of the spine sockets on the character. This is gonna allow the jetpack mesh to move with the character. We're gonna adjust the rotation and placement until it seems right on the character's back. Now that we moved the jetpack over, we can see that the camera suddenly moved up. And this is because the boom arm of the camera is colliding with the jetpack mesh. The simplest way to fix this is to go into our jetpack blueprint, select the static mesh, and change the collisions to no collision. As we switch back to our player character, we can see that the camera is now in its normal position again. We go ahead and play. We can test this out. And we see that the jetpack is moving with the character and the particles are coming from the nozzles of the jetpack. Now, if we go into our player character, this is where most of the decision making is gonna happen for the jetpack. First, let's give ourselves a little bit more room and move over the jump function. And then we're gonna create a branch statement this branch statement is gonna see if our character is currently falling. We're gonna do this by taking the character movement and getting the is falling variable out of that. The reason we wanna do this is if our character has jumped, then they will be falling afterwards. So in order to detect a double jump, we would want to hit jump after the character is already falling. We're going to plug this false side into the jump node and then break the true side and we'll create a custom event to plug this into. We'll call this custom event activate jetpack. We can go ahead and attach the true side of our branch statement to an activate jetpack call and then we'll straighten things out. Under Activate Jetpack, we'll get the character movement, and then from that, we're going to set the gravity scale. 
plug the execution nodes together, and we're going to make sure it says set gravity scale to zero. Let's drag off the character movement node and get a set velocity node. Plug this into the execution. When our jetpack is activated, we want it to change the velocity of the character in different directions, and that's what we're going to use this for. After a little bit of cleanup, we're going to drag off the character movement in node again, and we're going to get the current velocity of the character. Once we've done that, we can split the struct of the velocity, and that'll give us the velocity in each of the three axes rather than a combined structure. We're going to take these velocities and make a new vector. But we're only going to plug in the x and y values. We're going to set the z value to 250. And we're going to plug the vector output into the set velocity node. This will continue our x and y movements, but change our z movement. Let's go ahead and comment out this section and clean everything up. Now we're going to create a new custom node called Deactivate Jetpack. Again, we're going to get the character movement node. And then we're going to use this to set the gravity scale to 1. Hook up the execution pins. Then we'll go ahead and comment this section out. A little bit of cleanup. Now we'll move back to our jump input action, and we're going to need a new variable. Let's call it jetpack mode. This will keep track of whether our jetpack is currently enabled or not. After we activate the jetpack, we're going to set jetpack mode to true. And when we deactivate it, we're going to set jetpack mode to false. We're going to move back up to our jump input action, and off the completed, we're going to create a branch. This branch is going to have an input of jetpack mode. If jetpack mode is false, then we're going to continue to the stop jumping node. If jetpack mode is true, then we're going to deactivate jetpack. Let's go ahead and rearrange this a little, clean everything up. Go ahead and we've run the program. And we're able to fly around. With a double jump and then holding the space bar, the character continues to move up in the air. One thing we haven't done is the particle effect on the jetpack is always on. If we get the parent actor, which in this case would be our player character, we can then cast to the third person player character. Connect the executions. And then from here, we should be able to get the variable of jetpack mode. Now that we got that, we can create a branch statement. Hook up the execution pins. Here we can drag in our particles. And off of those, we're going to do set visibility. We're going to create two of these, one for each particle system. And we're going to set these to true off the true side of the branch statement.
Once we're done with that, we can copy those two nodes and put them off the false side of the branch statement, also setting those to false. Now we can fly around and the particle effect comes and goes as we're holding the spacebar rather than being all the time. As always, thanks for joining and I can't wait to see you next time.